I don't know about y'all, but I cannot wait for the live God Awful Movies in Las Vegas on October 28th. Tickets available at GodAwfulMoviesLive.com or follow the link on the show notes. And not just because it means I get to go to Vegas. It's also because that's when we're finally going to hear the guys tear all the way into the testament to male power fantasy that is Sound of Freedom. That is, of course, the heavily, one might even say entirely, fictionalized cinematic account of a dude named Tim Ballard who claims to go around the world with his paramilitary group rescuing sex trafficked children. He can't prove any of this, of course, but he can presumably get most of the way through his story about it without yelling pew pew and doing an explanatory dive roll. So that's enough for the Christian right. They made this movie lionizing him, even though virtually every actual expert in child trafficking in the world came out and said, this is nothing like reality, and this movie is so misleading that it's going to take resources away from legitimate, effective efforts to help the victims and redirect them to aging veterans' delusions of gallantry. Of course, ever since the movie came out, we've been getting a steady trickle of information showing that the film's producers, stars, and even real-life subject are way shittier than even we expected them to be. And the latest drip in that trickle comes in the form of at least seven women accusing Tim Ballard of sexually inappropriate behavior. Ballard, who is apparently gearing up for a Senate run, denies it, of course, but several women who don't know each other have come forward with very similar stories wherein they agreed to play the part of his wife in sting operations just to have him pressure them to sleep in the same bed with him and even showering with him. And I should point out that these seven women are just the accusers that are former employees of his organization or rather the organization that he started but stepped away from in circumstances that are getting less and less mysterious by the day. The point is that according to Vice, there are several more allegations from volunteers for the organization. In fact, his reputation has gotten so bad that even the Mormon church wants nothing to do with him. And that's all the more fucked up when you consider the fact that they're still willing to associate themselves with the Mormon church. But no, apparently they formally disowned him. Now, they're obviously not disassociating with him because he used an uneven power dynamic to pressure multiple women into sleeping with him. They can't condemn that without condemning Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, and virtually every historical Mormon on record. But they did get sick of his lies, including lies about being affiliated with their church and working directly with high-ranking Mormon officials who insist he never had anything to do with their church beyond tithing to it. Anyway, there's obviously a lot more to say on this story, but for all of that, you'll have to come see us in Vegas. Or wait until the following Tuesday when that episode is released on the RSS feed. Anyway, on that note, I'll wrap things up and hand you back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.